Well, this certainly is a story of another conflict, but unlike Syria or Libya, this is a conflict where one country has invaded its neighboring country and threatens to drag all others in, the, in this process. In fact, caught in the middle here are really the people of Ukraine. UN estimates more than 8,000 people who have died in the past one year of this war and says that it's just really the tip of the iceberg. All this happened because 365 days ago, one man unilaterally decided to challenge Ukraine's right to identity as a separate nation and right to choose its own government and allies in the 21st century. Here's our special report as the war in Ukraine now is set to cross the one-year mark. The People's Republic of Donbass asked Russia for help. In this regard, under Article 51, Part 7 of the Charter of the United Nations, with the approval of the Russian State Federal Council, and in accordance with the Friendship and Mutual Assistance Treaties with the Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic, ratified by the Russian Parliament on February 22nd. I decided to conduct a special military operation. It aims to protect people who have been bullied and subjected to genocide by the key regime for eight years. For that, we will strive for demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine and will bring to justice those who committed multiple bloody crimes against civilians, including Russian citizens. And with that, on 24th February 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine from three fronts in the biggest assault on a European state since World War II. Day before that, Russian troops gathered at the Belarusian border of Ukraine. in what the Kremlin called a routine joint military exercise. Ukraine started to raise alarm, but the West and world at large never thought it to be a serious threat. Within the first 24 hours, it seemed that all calculations on both sides had gone wrong. Ukrainians were shocked, but couldn't believe that their neighbor could really have invaded their country. While Russians thought that Kyiv would crumble in hours, much like what happened in 2014. But 2022 proved everyone wrong. The US and its NATO allies were cornered and put in a difficult spot. Helping Ukraine with arms and ammunition would drag the whole world into another world war. And doing nothing meant Putin could run over Ukraine and advance straight into the heart of Europe. But what no one counted on was the defiance of Ukrainian leadership in the face of the most brutal, unjustified assault from day one. We we are already handing out weapons and will hand them out to defend our country to everyone who wants and has the capacity to defend our sovereignty. The future of Ukraine depends on every citizen. The U.S. President Joe Biden hit Russia with a wave of sanctions on the first day of the invasion. These measures impede Russia's ability to do business in major currencies along with sanctions against banks and state-owned enterprises. The Russian military has begun a brutal assault on the people of Ukraine. Without provocation, <clears throat> without justification, without necessity, this is a premeditated attack. This is a deliberate, cold-blooded, and long-planned invasion. 
But in the middle of possible assault on Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, people started to flee. Ukrainian guards had to fire warning shots to prevent a stampede at Kyiv's central railway station on the second day of the invasion as thousands of people tried to force their way onto evacuation trains. People grabbed whatever they could and walked, trudged, dragged their feet to cross the border to safety to an unknown future. Whoever couldn't leave learned to live in bunkers. Sirens became the new alarm clocks that kept ringing at all awkward hours. And soon February was over and it was March. My heart is being torn apart. I'm sorry. It is tough. When families are separated, it is very hard. I'm sorry. I simply lack words. And I feel so sorry for these children. They are so young. <laughs> Spring came in Ukraine, but there was no one out to enjoy or celebrate it. People were busy surviving. While couples got married and mothers lost their babies at birth. On the war field, Ukraine ordered its able-bodied men to stay back while others were leaving the country. Sons, fathers, brothers. Husbands said goodbye to their loved ones, promising to reunite one day, knowing very well that day might not come. <laughs>